a couple of chapters from Steve Jobs biography called Scully and the So, and from there, we'll see how symbolic technique is being used over there. So, let's proceed. First of all, let's show you an ad. And 
you know, they want to, and hence they establish craziness as a symbol of genius. You have to look at it, uh, they are saying that IBM, which is actually a very accomplished company which makes, which has been, you know, evolving over the years, making good products, they still want to, you know, displace them as the center and they are saying that you don't have to confirm to this. If, if you, uh, I mean, uh, they are trying to create a sort of exclusivity for Apple right there and there. And hence they are associating with the words genius, etc. So, this is, this has gone on and on and Apple right now can, I think, be called as a symbol for say coolness, exclusivity, innovation, etc. This is the story of how, I mean, this is not the story, but this is some of the strategies that they followed in order to get the positioning of, you know, what they are, cool, innovative, etc. Now, what we'll do is, we we'll look at a couple of other examples, you know, which have followed the same strategy or similar strategy as Apple, and then we'll see what we can derive from. First example which we look at will be the Aam Aadmi Party. As you all know, Aam Aadmi Party was founded by Arun Kejriwal just a few months back. The aim of the organization is to create a transparent and corruption-free government. Uh, the basic stance is to, uh, to show how they are different from the other mainstream political parties which is existing. Uh, one of the uh, basic features which they have is, uh, they have a highly decentralized power system. There is no actual head for them or something. Uh, they don't have much vested interest and uh, other pa other parties' policies like buying buying election tickets with money is not also possible here. Yeah? And they have a very stringent system to screen all the possible candidates. They shouldn't be having any corruption uh, charges earlier, corruption history, or they shouldn't be of acquitted of any charges. Uh, they, they are also trying to show the the uniqueness by doing some rebellious activities like cutting off power cables in New Delhi to conserve power and also burning off the local power which they feel is not adequate. And the other thing is they are using the symbol as broom. A broom is basically used to clean the house and they have chosen the symbol to clear the to clean the, to clean the country of its corruption and other issues. So what they are saying here is that the Amadmi party is not a symbol as such. They are the same on these things. But what are they trying to do? They are trying to basically establish themselves as symbols so that once you think of Ahmad Party, you associate them with non-corruption, etc. And finally, you know, they come up. So, in that way, we are saying that it's true. Okay. Second example which you look about is of Harley Davidson. Uh, as the tagline goes, it says, we are American with birth, but liberal by choice. Uh, it is a brand which will all be associated with Undertaker riding in this, riding in this Harley Davidson coming to play. Uh, how they question their brand is basically, it is more than a, it's more than a bike, it's a way of life. And they try to bring in the uh, military, uh, military background into it. And there is also something called the Aulus, uh, sorry, Ali Aulus group, the all, which is a very exclusive group which many people, many people feel it's, feel proud to be part of. Uh, they have won all the major races which go, which are of course, illegally in the US. And uh, they consider it as a mainly a symbol of uh, liberation and a machoism among the American people. So, uh, also go to the, the point of all this is, is that if you establish yourself as a symbol for some certain value in the market, then when people think of that value, the people think of you. With continued usage, with uh, continued, uh, as time goes on, as these things become more and more prevalent, as the people talking about liberty in the same breath as they talk about Harley Davidson, the brand becomes something much more than what it was originally. It becomes a sign for liberation. So that's basically what Apple has done. Apple has uh, come to uh, stand for innovation currently. So whenever people think of the most innovative brands ever, most of us over here would probably cite Apple as at least one of the top 10 companies. So that's what, our, that's what comes to our mind. It has become a sign for innovation and uh, basically things like that, uh, youthful uh, joy and not adhering to a particular sort of standard. The communication strategy of Apple, if we uh, recap a bit, what they did in 1984 with that ad that we showed you at the beginning, the Super Bowl ad in 1984. It's attention grabbing, it's bizarre. People, experts, said that it would not succeed. They said that it would not work in the market. And yet it did. It was a quite a big hit actually. But then uh, uh, 
Uh, some other uh, aspects of their communication strategy is that less is more. In their ads, they've got uh, wide open spaces. As you can see in this ad, it's like wide open. There's only one thing attention grabbing. There's a central view screen, and there's nothing else. In this one, the I'm a PC, I'm a Mac campaign. They're surrounded by white light and nothing else. So that you focus on nothing in their background. You just see what they want you to see. They vociferously in the beginning, they ignored your critics was one of their main standing issues because they had a lot of critics. They, they had a lot of critics when they were just starting into the market when they uh, tried to poke the giant as it was in IBM. Uh, there were too many people who said that they would fail. And yet they said that let them do, let them say whatever, let me do, I mean, let me do what I think is best. That quote right, uh, right there, the great ideas of to see by composition from video commands, that actually a quote from Albert Einstein. And it was quoted by Steve Jobs in one of the interviews, in one of the many interviews that he faced, as a long-standing principle of this company. They're, they're about turning the ordinary into something beautiful. All of their products, the iPod, the iPad, the iPhone, no matter how much you agree with what the product is as a whole, how good it is or what it stands for, you have to agree that it's pretty beautiful. So that's one of the basic ways that they try to capture the market, make something beautiful. Now, that ad that we showed, the Super Bowl ad, that was in 1984. If we go forward 30 years, 2013, we see that the role has sort of reversed. Apple used to be the new kid on the block going up against the big guy. The big brother showed in that ad was actually, it, it, it was meant to signify IBM, the market leader at that point in computer sales. Now, uh, IBM was the big brother and I'm here, the little guy, going up against the big guy. I'm an underdog. They had that underdog spirit back then. But now, Apple is one of the most major companies. It's one of the most major computer companies in, uh, in, in the US right now. If I'm allowed to say, you can link it Steve Jobs to that big brother. But Steve Jobs is now coming up and telling you by this way. I mean, not now, just a few months back. He was the one who was playing the role of a big brother, coming up and saying, why iPhone, why iPad, this is great, this is great. So in that sense, almost Apple has become quite similar to IBM. They're no longer the little guys. They're the big guys now. And uh, with you know being a big guy, there's so many controversies that has come their way. They've used indentured labor. They've used child labor in the uh, production processes in China. So specifically and then uh, it's about control Apple's whole idea of how you use the machines based on control they won't allow you to choose what software you want they won't allow you to change their hardware in any way you can't upgrade on Apple you have to go to their you know you, you have to use proprietary machinery to even be able to uh, change the content on your iPad or on your iPhone or your iPad you have to log into iTunes the very very buggy software I do. You have to log into that and then uh, you have to uh, be in control of uh, Apple the entire way. So the entire, uh, one of their main things when they were starting up was to not to conform, to be different, to think different and all. Now it's sort of like they say that they want you to act in the way that they have clearly defined. You can choose any number of ways as long as the ways are what they define it to be. So the roles have been reversed. They are now the big guy. And uh, if you can, if you see at the mobile OS wars now, it's uh, iOS versus Android. Now Google's Android, it's an open platform. They say that, okay, I made an open source thing, you can uh, put this into your phone, you can code it however, if you, uh, however you want to code it and distribute it. Uh, so they're about freedom now. Google is about some of the values at least that Apple had when it was just starting out. It's about openness versus closed, it's about freedom versus control, corporate control. Google is uh, Google something. Uh, Google is, says that it's for everyone. It's in the very lower end phones also. It does not say that it's exclusive. Whereas exclusivity is actually one of the iPods, one of the iPads, iPhones selling points. That this is exclusive. Even though the facts now state that there's a quite big population who are currently using iDevices, so it's no longer exclusive. But that's the way the marketing points it out. So. Uh, some of the things that we see that the position has changed. Whereas it used to be IBM as the big guy, Apple as the little guy. Now it's Google uh, Google as the little guy facing the big guy, Apple. Now I'm not saying that Google is a little guy in any sense of the word, but then some of the values they represent is some of the values that Apple used to represent as a little guy. So uh, what, it, what we mean to basically say is that the roles have changed and that the symbolism that Apple used to stand for now 
are, uh, are some of the symbolism that Google can use now. Uh, some of the communication strategy that Apple used to do, uh, bizarre ads, uh, attention grabbing ads, proper marketing where you can only focus on one thing. Some of these communication strategies of Apple, Google can also use now.